It was an awful book looking back now compared to some of the books I've read, but it was proper anti-West and all oh, the white man's this and that. It was written by, I think... Really? It was, yeah, it was... Is it a recognition of a stone book or something? Right. <laughs> no, it wasn't that. <laughs> the white man devil... All right! This white devil thing has gone far enough. I, st I, I still do. I try and stay away from the news because, let's be honest, it's all, all depressing and half of it's... Oh, I'm not going to get into conspiracy theories, I was going to say. <laughs> it's not me having a dig at other religions or whatever. In other beliefs like Christianity, Hinduism and all that, it's about getting feelings. It's The whole thing is about having, oh, feelings. Yeah, the shake made a beeline for me. I was the token white guy in the room at the time. Like, So the shake, he's like, oh, let me ask you a question. I was like, okay. Because everything I asked him, he could answer. And I was like, okay. And he's like, let me ask you a question. I thought, oh, yes, okay. Let's see if I can get out of it this way. And he's like, do you believe in the prophet, peace be upon him? I was like, yeah. And he's just like, do you believe in one God? I was like, yeah. Do you believe in this? Yeah. Do you believe in that? Yeah. Like, you're a Muslim. He's like, he's like, no, 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 I'm not. He's like, no, you believe everything that we believe, but you just haven't said the words yet. Like, you believe it yeah, in your heart, yeah. but it hasn't, like, come out of your mouth yeah. yet. And I was like, damn. Salam alaikum. Welcome to another episode of the best podcast on YouTube, Rerooted Raw. We've got a guest, my, one of my good friends, Martin. Salam alaikum, bro. Welcome, Salam, bro. Yeah, welcome, to to the, welcome to the channel, I was going to say. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, so, Martin, you've not always been a Muslim, have you? No. So tell us a bit about what you, what you used to believe, your lifestyle before Islam. So I've been a Muslim six years now. Um, I took my Shahada in uh, Ramadan. It was totally unplanned, not the thing, not at all what I expected, but I'll explain the journey to that now. Yeah, yeah. So, um... Brought up in, I won't say the village, but in a small village in uh, South Wales. Um, parents were Christian, going to take us to uh, Sunday school. And mm -hmm. to, so every Sunday you'd be in there, sitting there through the boring lectures, not understanding what's going on, not really getting taught about it. Grew up a bit um, questioning it a bit more, asking more and more questions and thinking, this doesn't really make much sense. Um and then just moving away from the church and like living my own life. I think I must have been about 14, 15 when I stopped going because it was just, uh, well, you get to that rebellious stage, then you're like, oh, I can't. So my, yeah, my parents were just like, okay, stay home then. If, because if I'm going to go there, I'm going to run around and steal the bread and all the rest of it. <laughs> like, <laughs> be like, just the pain, like, because we used to have the, so you'd have the main, um, uh, service yeah. with all the adults and the serious bit and they're all there in their Sunday bests and um, and then the kids would be in the back in lessons learning the stories of the prophets and all the rest of it and then um, they do communion because it was a Baptist church um, so they'd have the bread and stuff so we used to go steal all the crusts because nobody likes the crusts so hence why I haven't got any hair, uh, curly hair or any hair um, um, so yeah my parents thought it was probably best just to leave me at home at that point <laughs> Um, but I'm one of four kids, so was, at, at that time there was three of us that used to go because my youngest brother was too young, and all three of us sort of stopped going at the same time, yeah. and we all moved away from religion. My parents, well, my, my dad passed away a couple of years ago, um, but they were both heavily involved in the church, um, on the committees and all the rest of it, so there's still still that belief in them, mm -hmm. so I obviously came up in that um, household where... I, I still get told off if I go, oh, Jesus. I get told, like, yeah, yeah. Don't, say, don't say his name in vain. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, so it was quite a... I wouldn't say overly religious, but it was there was religion in the house. Yeah, there's a tone. Um, uh, let me tell you a story, actually. You're talking about stealing in the church. I didn't steal. I just <laughs> stealing ate. bread <laughs> in the church. So um, it reminded me of something, because I did something similar. Um, I've said it before on the podcast. I, I used to, My mum used to send me to Sunday school but for summer camp, like summer, because they she wanted she was still working. It was summer holidays. I was at home. Let's send him here. <laughs> and we at lunchtime we used to have the, like a few biscuits and some juice. And you're only allowed three biscuits or so. You know what I mean? And then I'd uh, and they'd do it in batches. So you'd get your biscuits and we eat biscuits outside, drink the drink. And then I was like, I'm gonna. I'm a bit. I'm still a bit hungry. So me and my mate used to go around and we just pretend we're in the second batch and that. And I got caught. I got caught stealing biscuits. Right, had an empty cup. 
I popped it, put it on the side, and I was like, yeah. and then she went, oh, what are you doing? I was like, oh, no, 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 I just wanted to um, fill up my drink. And then someone replaced my drink with a full drink, and I went, Shh, to, pick, to pick up the drink, and it just went, and drenched me in, like, uh, apple juice or whatever. <laughs> And then I just I just felt so flustered. I was like crying. Ah, don't want to go back again. No, embarrassment. So that was my, uh, you shouldn't steal then, should you? No, that's what Allah did. Are you going to steal then? There you go. There's your punishment. Yeah, in that. But yeah, so there's like a religious undertone in your family, but it's not yeah. uber strict. Yeah. So no, all the kids moved away from religion. Mm. Um, none of us, uh, well, obviously I'm not Christian, but none of the others... They probably would identify as Christian on yeah. like a census or something, yeah, but yeah. they don't go to church. They don't yeah. do a, do anything. So it's just a typical British person. Yeah, definitely. What's your, what's your religion? Mm, Christian? Yeah. Church, <laughs> Je- I, Jedi. Mum, am I Church of England? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Church of England. Yeah, same thing. Um, so yeah, Christmas is a big deal with them, and uh, but for more um, presents-wise rather than the birth of Jesus and the rest of it. So... Um, so yeah, that was my my upbringing, I guess. Um, and then I th- I start well looking back now. I I thought I didn't know any Muslims in my uh, uh, circle of friends. Um, yeah, in school. Yeah. So in my in my class, I thought it was all because we were very much a white area. It was a couple of people of of color. I didn't didn't know what they were at the time looking back now i know i had an indian friend somali friends the somali friends were muslim mm. their parents were muslim but being where we being brought up where we were they couldn't pray in school and stuff and like mm. nobody's heard of muslims re was this is christianity They're, like there was no we'll teach you about like i know with the kids in school now they teach them about all the different faiths and buddhism and christianity and islam and judaism and so we didn't have any of that. It was literally, this is Christianity and that's all they teach us. So I didn't even know what what Muslims were or Islam yeah. was and stuff. So so when I left school, I was very naive. Um, went to college. Again, white area, no Muslims. I, or I couldn't, I didn't recognise anybody as being non, non-valleys, non I guess. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, when I was about 18, I got my first job in Cardiff. Um which compared to London, well, is tiny, but it seemed like the big wide world at the yeah, time. Yeah. All these different different nationalities everywhere. Um, and my first job in Bank of Wales, I um, met this guy who introduced himself as, um, oh, my name's Mohammed and I'm a Muslim. I was like... Did you say I'm Muslim? Yeah, yeah, oh, wow. massive, mashallah, massive beard, he had a nice haircut like me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and he was like, my name's Mohammed, I'm Muslim. And I was like, a what? <laughs> I was a Muslim. Really? Wow. Honestly, I had no clue, bro. No clue at all. Um, How old were you then? 18. Okay. So which year was this? Which year? Yeah. Oh, i got to work that backwards now. I'm not, I haven't, give me my calculator. Yeah. <laughs> no. So 18 um, years ago. 18 years ago, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, 2020? 20? 20? No. Oh, 20, no, I'm thinking we're 2020. We're <laughs> not. We're 2022 now, aren't we? So 2002, 2003, 4? Okay. I can't do the maths. Um <laughs> I was random. <laughs> no, <laughs> T- it's tested good. me because I was. A, I used no, to be an accountant. It's, it's like 2002, 2003, especially after you know. Oh yeah, after, 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 the, oh, yeah after 9/11 and stuff. Yeah, yeah. you would have thought you'd kind of have some sort. Some there would have been a blip on your radar, right? On mm. what Muslims were or yeah. Islam was, I was, I was right? Oblivious, well, to be welcome to the, yeah, the. Yeah, thanks, man. Welcome well, yeah, to the, Sarkib, to the show. Thanks for the introduction. Yeah, cool for it. Let's, let's introduce Sarkib. <laughs> as well. Everyone knows Sarkib. Yeah, I need, I need, I need double mentoring. That's what it is. It's like watching over both shoulders. <laughs> the good and the bad. <laughs> he pointed at I'm me. definitely on the bad side. Anyway. He pointed at me when you said good. Though, so. <laughs> I'll leave that to you too. Um, but no, I was oblivious to all that sort of stuff, honestly, with, with regards to Islam. And um, I just didn't, like, Twin Towers has happened. I didn't actually understand what, like, I, st- I, I still do. I try and stay away from the news because, let's be honest, it's all, all depressing and half of it's, oh, I'm not going to get into conspiracy theories. I was going to say, <laughs> in my eyes, they teach you a certain narrative and I wasn't into that. So I, I pr- try my best not to read the news and listen to it. Sorry. Well, it's not connected to Islam, let's be honest, uh, yeah. but the way it was being connected to Islam. So anyway, this guy just introduced himself, like I say, Muhammad and a Muslim. And I was like, a what? Um, so he basically, he did the quick, oh, this is what I believe. sort of quick five pillars sort I'm of sure thing. That. That's awesome. Um, and I was like, huh, that's uh, that's nice. Thinking you're weirdo. Like I'm 18. I'm a valley's boy. Yeah. And you believe in this, 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 and this? Nah, forget that. Um, so 
yeah, that was my first introduction as I see it to a Muslim. I was like, say, looking back, I knew I was in school with Muslims now, but they couldn't practice their their Islam as they should have because there was no such thing as giving people prayer rooms and like giving people their rights, I guess. So, um, so yeah, that was my first proper introduction to a, a Muslim. Mm. Um, and then I moved jobs probably every two, three years or so. Um, and every job I met a new Muslim, yeah. uh, not a new Muslim. Yeah, I met yeah, a, a Muslim, Muslim who was uh, Mus- <coughs> a person who was Muslim. Um, and I do the random questions, like you know what it's like. We've we've spoken about this previously, but you'd be like, "So why do you fast?" And you get, "Oh, because it's Ramadan." You wouldn't get the proper answer, like yeah. you, so. You get, "Oh, it's Ramadan." What's Ramadan? Oh, I got us fast for thirty days. Ah, oh, okay. And then the next person I'd speak to, so why do, why do girls wear hijab? Oh, because they cover their hair. That is not a proper answer. Like it was yeah. the, all these little short answers. So that must have gone on for like. 15 years I reckon in between all my jobs asking all these people just questions but it never so it's the closed questions always like it was there was always the closed answer sorry so I never got that eureka moment of oh that makes sense and then yeah it was probably about eight years ago six seven eight years ago um actually no I've been Muslim six years so it would have been about eight years ago I met a sister that I was working with and I was asking questions and getting answers. And she turned to me and she said, actually, don't, don't ask me any questions. She said, read a book because I'll teach you my culture as well as Islam. Oh, wow. Um, and she said, that's not the right way to do it. She said, obviously, I'll know Islam, but I'll know my culture and not be able to potentially separate the two. Yeah. So I could teach you something wrong. So she said, read a book. So I was like, yeah, I'll read a book. I'm happy to, uh, not the best at reading books. I take my time, but I'll read it. Um, so yeah, I started reading. It was a awful book looking back now compared to some of the books I've read but mm. it was proper anti-West and oh the white man's this and that it was written by I think it was, really? yeah it was, was it a recognition of a song book or something? <laughs> no it wasn't that <laughs> the it white was, man devil it was re- white devil alright this white devil thing has gone far enough written by a South Asian person oh, but right, it was okay. just saying like how Britain's oppressive towards um, Muslims and stuff and, okay. um, so it wasn't it, about Islam it was political situation there was politicals in there as well yeah. but it sparked something with me and i was like okay so some of this resonates with me I'm, okay and then i i was like okay let's do a bit more googling because that was just from like islamic relief shop or something we right. it was lunchtime and she was like oh i'll quickly go there pick it up for you brought it back and it had roughly the five pillars but it, it was the best that she could do and like say it so got the like, book. yeah i have Can i'll I lend it to you yeah, i want to see that <laughs> um so yeah, I did some research, best book to learn about Islam and yeah. I picked up, I think I went through about three different books then. I think I was on my, so that would have been my fourth book then. So I was on my fourth book. I started a job in Newport, mm. South Wales still, love South Wales, never moved out, um, in Newport. Um, and I was reading this book on my lunch break. I can't remember what, I had, what the name of the title was, but it obviously had Islam on the front. So um, this guy, guy walks over to me. He's like, what are you reading? And I was like, oh, I showed him the book. He's an Asian guy. Um, showed him the book. And he's like, oh, amazing. He's like, um, you're Muslim? I was like, no, no. <laughs> Hell no. Um, I said, I'm just interested in reading. Um, he's like, oh, you got any questions? Let me know. He said, if I can't answer them, I'll speak to somebody who who will be able to, and I'll get you the answer. Yeah. I was like, oh, amazing, thanks. I was reading this. I was, I was in this job probably a year with an... When I met Arif, though his name is Arif, sorry, he then introduced me to the other Muslim boys, and so I got a bit closer to them. And then I was reading all these books, and like one day they, they were eating this Domino's. I walked over, I was like, "Not nah, Haram boys." Uh, they were like, "Oh no, no, the chicken's halal. Uh, uh, the rest of it's not." And I was like, "Oh okay." And they're like, "Damn, this white boys asking us questions. Is this halal? Is this oh, Haram yeah. and stuff?" The and chicken that, halal, supposedly. We'll have to Google uh. that. We'll cut, <laughs> cut, cut. <laughs> don't, don't put that out there because I could be in sin. Yeah. Um, but no. Um, Check s- if it's halal first before you yeah. use it. <laughs> Disclaimer on the bottom. More um, in the Quran, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, I was in that pious sort of, like I hadn't even been Muslim, but I was like, oh, this is halal, this is haram. I could understand it all. Um, not all. I could understand the basics of it. Um, well, Martin, were there any ins- instances as a non-Muslim where you had to defend Islam? Did, did you ever come across that? Because it's happened a so, few times already, Ben, like with a few of the guests before. So I do, I do, yeah, I do resonate with that in a little bit, to be honest, because like 
a lot of my friend, well, ex friends now were anti Islam. Like as, uh, when I became Muslim, I, I've only stayed friends with two people from my non Muslim days because um, the rest of them just cut me out because you haven't got the the common commonality. Like you don't go to the pub anymore, you don't go to the casino, you don't you don't live the the high life, I guess. So it's like, oh, we'll, we'll invite him four times on the fifth time. Oh, don't bother inviting him; he's not going to come. So, um, but during during the pre Shahada times, they would be like, "Why are you reading that book?" Like, oh. and then they'd see something I don't know, maybe in the news, and they'd be slating Muslims and oh, so so oppressive towards women and this and that. And then I'd be like, "Well, actually, from the books I've read, women are like." up on a pedestal they're looked up to and they should be respected and they're like oh but they have they force them to wear these hijabs and i'm like they're not actually forced to wear them it's their their choice and it's up to them and so yeah i do re- do remember doing some of that sort of stuff but it was never sort of um debating debating yeah it was just a case of somebody be like oh so so because most people th- or most people that i used to hang around with thought it was an oppressive religion and it was like backwards because we can't go out clubbing we can't party we can't do what we can't <clears throat> can't do the Western life, I guess. Um, I do remember saying, "No, no, it's not what you think it is." But um, when I look, when I was looking to Islam, I kept it all a secret, so I didn't like I didn't um, show people what I was reading and stuff, and I'd, I'd worried and a bit embarrassed. I didn't um, actually, yeah, I didn't actually show yeah. it. I guess, like I was saying, I was in, on lunch in the corner of the canteen reading yeah, this book, yeah. and obviously. Um, he must have saw the word Islam on the yeah. book and came over, and he's like, "Ooh." Um, so yeah, that's uh, I didn't. Sp- it's t- I didn't tell my parents. I didn't tell anyone in my family. It was like <laughs> after I took my shahada, that was a yeah, a massive uh, not problem. But I had, like I had a, uh, my brother. He's uh, he's the same age as me, um, and he came in. And he's like, "What the hell is this? You you become mus- like right right? Sit down. I need to talk to you." And like four hours later, he walks out of the room. He goes. Okay, I can see you've done this for your own reasons. You're not brainwashed. I was like, yeah. I was worried you were going to go down like the the terrorism yeah, type of yeah. thing. But so yeah, there's lots of fear when when we do revert or convert or whatever na- word we want to use, <laughs> yeah, new yeah. Muslim. Um, so there is a huge fear of, and that's part of the reason I kept it away from people as well, is because you don't want to be looked at and suspicious. Or he's reading that or. I don't know. Is it where, where's he going tonight? Who's he seeing and yeah. stuff? So it was. It is awkward to read it. I think because there's the um, the preconceived ideas of well Syria and all the rest of it, like people yeah. going off and doing stupid stuff. So I think everyone's different. I'm I'm quite a private when when it's to, to do with deep stuff or important stuff in life. Quite private with that. So it's quite ironic, ironic that I'm now on the uh, on, <laughs> online cards yeah. and stuff. But but yeah, I kept everything a secret because it's about like I was wanting to internalize everything first before anyone judged me and stuff. But then when I was Muslim, when I became a Muslim, um, I didn't know many Muslims, and I would kind of just like I'd, for example, on my lunch break, I'd sit in the like market, not market square, like there's a area in the city that's like where everyone is, sort of thing. Sit on the bench and I'd be reading the Quran. Like I used to, but I wouldn't be. But I would actually do the opposite and show it off. I'd be like, Quran, because if a Muslim sees me, they might go, "Ah, oh, Salam alaikum, you're Muslim," and then like kind of, please be my friend. Yeah, <laughs> little bit. <laughs> oh, love me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so um, it was not like that. It was more like it was an opportunity for someone to go, "Oh, wow, you're Muslim. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, do you want to come to yeah. this event or da da da?" Because. I did, yeah, I just didn't know. I did, I felt quite anxious about going to masjid then. Back it was really it was like the first month of me become Muslim and that. But. Is it is it a bit of like a guilty pleasure going through that experience of you're a non-Muslim, you're looking at Islam, and then you're reading these books and you're getting something out of it, but then you're also there's an element of what would the my family and friends think about it, and obviously quite a lot of it was negative, right? So um, my parents, uh, in fairness to them, Alhamdulillah, they were so good for me. Both of them were like. You got a religion. We don't agree with it. We don't understand it. But as long as you got a religion, we prefer you to have that than none. I was oh, like, oh, really? okay. That's oh, both my parents. And you, like I said earlier, like they're yeah. in, like they're my my father was part of the committee on the. I can't remember the proper name for it, but on the committee in the in the church, my mum was one of the main helpers and stuff. They're like my mum's still involved in the church now, and um, yeah, for them two to say that, I was like, oh, amazing! I like, broke down, sort of thing. I, yeah. They, 
these, like these, these boys will understand my uh, my emotional turmoil. <laughs> Do we bring tissues? No. <laughs> 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 really, he's got them. So we're going all already. out. He's got. He's an emotional guy. Um, Sorry, we, it could have been. A, it wasn't a Kleenex, a Kleenex box. I know I promised you one, but <laughs> we've we've got a few budget constraints in place. So, so you know, you're about talking that. about the guilty pleasures. Let yeah. me tell you a bit about when I used to um, when I used to live with my girlfriend. Okay. Um, and her parents might be over. And this was early days, guys. So no haram, please. It's like, you know, I was like a couple of months into Islam. I, I love praying Salah. Mm. And it because it, it was new, it was exciting. And um, and I would, and it was like I had to sneak off and do it and stuff. And because we didn't, I didn't want it to be awkward or anything. But it was like a guilty pleasure. You'd, like, you'd make sure no one's in the room and uh, like, oh, yeah. Okay, no, everyone's upstairs. Wicked, right. And it was like, oh. Nice, nice time to pray, you know. It, so there was that, but that was after I became Muslim. So okay, yeah, I gotta resonate with that. Wouldn't yeah. after after you become Muslim, like I, my mum lives in the bungalow. I live with my mum. Used to live with my mum. Um, I was where I moved in when my father was ill, he had terminal cancer. So um, I had to go home because mm. we were told he was going to be in a wheelchair. So my, there's no way my mum could lift my dad. Yeah. Um, so I moved in to help out with that. Um, and they were in the bungalow, and every time you do the prayer, you'd be like walk around. Okay, where is everyone in the house? And then you close the door, and you'd start. You'd be like Allahu Akbar, and you'd be like, oh, right, relax. You're not trying to hide it behind the door, uh, but in the outside world, because it's that conflict between the two worlds, I guess yeah, for me. Yeah. But then every so often, you hear your mother Martin, and you're like, oh, what do I do? Do I break it? Do I not? And like, um. Back then, I didn't know any better, so I'd be like, "Oh yeah, mum, what, what yeah, do you want? Yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming." A lot of people um, do that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'd break my salah all the time. But back then, I didn't know that, like, if your mother calls you, you can break your son's salah, um, but you can't break your father's salah. So, um, but yeah, like I say, go on. I thought you were going to no, say no, no, I was just going to say that before the <laughs> before before the um, we started filming. He was like, "Look, I don't like the idea of giving any fatwa advice or <laughs> yeah. halal and haram because if I tell one person the wrong thing, and this is right on the day of judgment, you'll be accounted. So I don't want to go because guys. So uh, he's involved in a dawah organization behind the scenes. He doesn't like being on the camera. Okay, so he's like, and this is the reason. And he was like, and I was like, yeah. So don't worry, we're not going to talk about any halal haram. What do you do first yeah. ten minutes? I, I forget we're on." <laughs> this thing though that's a problem I'm chatting to my mate it's yeah, like it's oh fine. yeah let's just have a quick that's, chat that's, that's the atmosphere no we're only joking obviously so um, this is what but no learned. do your own research please yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah from from my research that's what I learned but at the yeah. time I didn't know any different you're yeah, a new Muslim same. You're, you're just as soon as somebody calls your name you're like oh if, what if they walk in on me I'm dressed in a thobe and oh my god I can't do like I prefer to wear a thobe when I pray because my back's not on display and stuff yeah, it's yeah. not any other reasons um but yeah, I'm in my thobe. I'm I got a prayer mat, and I, I, I haven't got a toppy. Uh, I never, n- yeah, I never actually wore one. Thinking about it, um, I've got loads in the house though. Keep yeah. your keep your head nice and warm in the winter. Um, so I've got a fadger thobe. I don't wear thobes normally. Oh, yeah. fadger! I was thinking you said badger. For uh, badger. Like, what? <laughs> Black and white badger stripes. <laughs> <laughs> so we now we need to make a picture of me in a thobe and then like superimpose a badger skin on it. So. You, might, you might be onto something there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gems of Islam. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, so I got so it's so right. You get out of bed, right, in your jamas, and you got pray salah. Maybe you know you need to get changed and stuff. So, what wins in in the night, like when you're praying salah, like especially in the summer? What wins? Go in doing all the and then putting some jeans on and a t shirt and oh is it oh is it the right one or just whacking a thobe on mm. and just boosh done easy so I've got I've got two thobes that I have for fadger when that one gets a bit over wet worn I, I I wash it and use the other one no I love it. so uh, so yeah I do love wearing them to be honest I wear them to Juma as well because again you don't have to worry about it uh, every time I go to the mosque there's one in my boot in my car mm. always just to, just in case. Yeah. Um, but it's so much easier to pray in them in my eyes. But yeah, I just ma- I make fun of people like you. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> you, you do make no, fun of people I'm, like I, me no, anyway. Well, what it is is um, so it, there's a thing that uh, new Muslims tend to do where they get this Culturalism. thing called uh, no, they get they, a lot. It's natural, right? It's a, it's called the imposter syndrome. I wanted to talk about this actually on 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 air. It's where you um, become a Muslim. You're convinced Islam's true, 
but you're not fitting in culturally with people or whatever, and you feel like you're kind of like faking being imposter. a Muslim. Yeah, yeah imposter. Yeah, but you're not. You're you're a Muslim. You mm. accept the principles of Islam, and you you um. Th- so you get this. Th- you get when you feel like that. There's two paths. In m- this is my theory anyway. And it's in the comments, see if you agree. Um. So a, a a new Muslim goes down a path. They completely embrace a different person's culture to feel like they fit in as Islam. And what is that? In in the UK, <clears throat> it's Thobes, uh, Shawakamis, and all that sort of Please, stuff. Yeah. Changing your name to an uh, Arabic name and all this. And they, re- early on in their journey, embrace all that. And, and to the outside, it looks like that person's just trying to fit into a group. And, that, and, and then you've got this other one where they they feel like the imposter, but they kind of rebel and go, yeah, well, Islam's not cultural. And they go anti thobe I went down that way. Uh, way. You went down the other way. I, did, I didn't. No, you um, did. Admit. <laughs> actually, th- thinking about it, yeah, I I did. Well, I think we all, like you say, we all go through it. We all get that, I'm an imposter. Yeah. Like, where do I go? But somebody gifted me my first thobe yeah. and I was like, I'm not wearing that. Same. Uh, similar yeah, to Jordan. Yeah, yeah. I'm not wearing a dress. Yeah. Like, um, and then you... You wear it and you start praying. You're like, ah, I see the logic behind this yeah, now. It's yeah. so much easier not like pulling your top all the time and making yeah. sure you're in in a decent uh, state. Um, so yeah, I I can't remember how we got into this subject, but anyway, it's all right. It's how it, it's how it flows. <laughs> go on, go on. Um, no, I always wear like I say wear thobes for for going to the mosque and stuff. And even at home, I'll pray in the thobe because it's so much more comfortable. Yeah. Like you don't have to panic about. Yeah, aura showing and yeah. So we we ran uh, aura. We should explain that actually, just in case there's non-Muslims watching and so or it, new Muslims. Yeah, so aura is um, it's like the parts of your body that's private parts. So you know, for a man, it's to the navel to the knee. So that needs to be covered in public and especially when praying. Cause when you wear t- uh, especially tight t-shirts, when you bow in salah, sometimes that could ride up and you could see that part of the body which is it's not good etiquette mm. um so that's why well that's what, that's what we're talking about sorry sorry just good to clarify I was, gonna, I was gonna speak about how um we ran the survey for new muslims right mm. and i used to be of ben's opinion whereby like you know imposter syndrome you know you're living in the uk you know it makes it a lot easier especially with your non-muslim family friends when they've you, you first of all you're researching Islam, then you accept Islam, and now you're looking like some Arab person from exactly. thousands of miles away, mm. yeah. and you're not like one of them anymore at yeah. all. Why are you wearing? So a dress, it doesn't no. help, right? Um, but then there's other p- there the, for, for black research, and you kind of helped me with that, right? With the mm. data, uh, with the business data model, yeah. right? But there was uh, from that research, I I did see that it did help some new Muslims because they may have had a sordid past. And they wanted to start from a clean yeah, slate. Yeah, yeah. So, hence, uh, a new name, uh, the way they dressed, the way they carry themselves. It was, a, it was fresh, a fresh yeah. slate for them. Yep. Right. So, yeah. I, I kind of understand it from that perspective yeah. as well. So, Do you know what? I, I, I was talking to you about this. Uh, the new Muslim, f- I went to the new Muslim retreat back in um, 2012. I was a real fresh new Muslim. And I actually asked that Sheikh um, Rahim, Gre- Rahim Green on the. Um, on uh, like doing the Q and A, and I was like, "Why do why do converts wear like Arab clothes and stuff?" And I've just because I thought I had to do it, and I looked into it, and it's just not. I can't find anywhere with that. Or oh, you have to wear the thobe and a hat when you pray, and can't find that anywhere really. And he was like, "Well, it's not. You, you don't have to do that. It's um, it it's just the society sees you as a Muslim when you wear that." Mm. And some people like to w- w- like when they become a Muslim, they um, like to where your sins are w- wiped clean. They want to represent that and, and reinvent. And I, can't, I, I do get that. I do get that. I just think that I, I think that, yeah, everyone's different. And I, I'm not right. I just had that. I had a quite a strong opinion before. I'm a bit like I'm just not bothered now. You know I think I mean? some of it yeah, could each be, of their own, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, you know. yeah. Some of it could be as well trying to. Um, integrate as well like yeah. there's the loneliness aspect as well yeah. coming from a, a, a white area where there's no well i've found out there are a couple of muslims living there now um 
you dr- you could dress like that because when you go to Cardiff, people are like, oh, mashallah, he's a Muslim. And like you say before, when you're reading the Quran, like, please come and talk to me because I, w- I need to speak yeah, to someone. Yeah, yeah. Because I was really lonely. Like, yeah. wh- I don't know if you want to talk about like the early years of like being a Muslim or whatever. Well, actually, we, we've gone on and, and touched everywhere. What I wanted <laughs> to talk about is actually you becoming Muslim. We haven't talked. How did, oh, what, yeah, we what had the happened book, didn't we? Yeah, so in your head, you, you've been researching Islam. It's, you're thinking it's coming true, like it is true and yeah. stuff. Like what happened? I read reading these books and agreeing with everything I read and knowing in my head that I don't want to be a Muslim. Yeah, same here. As soon yeah. as I become Muslim, like I used to... Uh, I, Admit uh, you're not not meant to admit your sins, but this was pre-Islam. I used to go to the casino twice a week playing poker. Yeah, I miss it like crazy. I'm not even going to pretend I don't. Yeah, uh, but there's, I can't do it, so I don't do it. But I, you know what I mean. Yeah, Pe- I d- people miss their sausage and egg McMuffins yeah, and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> other brands are available. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, people miss stuff like that. I miss poker so bad. Yeah, um, I've actually thought of ways of trying to make it halal and stuff, but then. Like yeah. me and me and my mate Tan, we were talking about it, and I was like, "Oh, what do you think of this?" Everybody buys in, they put, and then the winner chooses which charity to put it towards. He's like, "Oh, mashallah, that's a good idea." But what happens if somebody becomes addicted to poker because of that tournament? Yep. And that's your sin. Yeah, and I'm like, man, how am I ever going to play this game again? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, um, I used to used to go to the casino, like I say, twice a week, um, play my poker. I didn't drink. I, I'd given up drink a couple of years, like when I started researching into Islam, and re- like I'd given up pork, alcohol, and stuff. Really, it. that's so common, isn't it? Yeah. I didn't. <laughs> it was on day one. I think I was like, oh god, I can't have a drink now. Do you know? This is the one thing I tell. I, I'm involved in a uh, new Muslim support in different uh, dif- for different people, yeah. um, predominantly in South Wales. Um, but the one thing you get told as a, as a Muslim. As soon as you become Muslim, is this is haram, that's haram, that's haram, that's haram, and people are saying you can't go here, you can't do that. It took twenty three years for the Quran to be uh, given down yeah. um, from God, Allah, um, and for the mu- the new Muslims at the time to adapt to Islam. So when people when you say la 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 la, don't think you have to cut everything straight away. You should, but if you're struggling with something, don't. Repent, feel guilty, and try your best to stop yeah, it. Yeah. But if somebody's like haram, 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 um, know that it took twenty three years for for the for the, the, the best Muslims, yeah, the best Muslims, the yeah. best Muslims. It took them twenty three years to adapt to this religion. Yeah. So if it takes you twenty three days, two or three months, alhamdulillah, you're doing a good job. And so yeah, I think especially we all get as Muslims. I don't know if you've had this, right? There's this urge in you when you see a Muslim do something haram. You're just like. I need to tell it, like, Go over. or or is it like, <laughs> oh, you're not doing that properly? In in mm-hmm. and there's something that I'm in you that just wants to tell tell them and and correct them or, or whatever. And I think a lot of people get that, especially when they f- start in their journey in Islam, they start feeling established and they're established in the Dean and they've got a bit of knowledge and 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 it's all and there's no, on the internet. It's easy to just say someone's ha- yeah, that's haram or whatever, <laughs> but. It's all about context. You kind of have mm. to like look at the situation. This is what, give what context. I can't remember the amount of companions it was. I remember reading about how many pe- companions were allowed to give a fatwa at the time of the Prophet peace upon him, yeah. and it was it it's was like thousands of companions mm. there were, and it was uh, like I think it was like less than twenty. Twenty. Le- yeah, well, the like companions of the Prophet peace upon him were allowed to say that uh, in this situation, that thing, that's haram. Uh, you know, and these are the people that. We're with the Prophet peace be upon him, and yet we're online going, "Well, that's um, haram and that's halal. You should do this. You should do that." The thing is, the the prophetic way of giving dawah and, and mentoring a new Muslim. He, I've said it before. Um, he's when there's a there's a um, hadith, um, and uh, do you remember the guy's oh, the, the companion's name went to Yemen? Bin Jabal. There we go, mashallah. I knew you, that's what this is why you're here. <laughs> this is right. the only reason we brought him. <laughs> so um not so just a token brown guy. <laughs> <laughs> so he's he he um he was sent to Yemen to give dawah and he mm. said if you, if people become Muslim, first teach them the meaning of the shahada. Once they know that, then teach them how to pray. Once they're praying, then teach them about uh, um, so uh, fasting Ramadan. Mm. Once they've done that, and then and it's the five pillars. And it, the thing is, it's once they've done that, mm. it's not teach it all. They've got to do it. It's a punk, you know. So the Prophet peace upon him expected of new Muslims to 
to do it slowly. So 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 that's a little advice out there. If you got like if you've got like a new Muslim at work or anything like that, don't overburden him or her. Like let them get on with their journey and, and support them with those stages in the order that the Prophet peace upon him gave, because that's the Sunnah and that's Salah. what we're about, aren't we? Salah is the most important. That's what we yeah, that's what we we do with our new Muslims. Like um, you learn Al Fatiha, then and you learn the motions and. Once you've got the prayers down, then we'll move on to something else. But like the most important thing is the prayer. If you don't pray, well, no, I'm not going to say that. If you don't pray, it's obviously a huge sin. But um, but yeah, you have to pray. Being a Muslim, you have to pray five times a day. It doesn't matter if you know all this, all the, the hadith that go in. Like you got sa- you remembered all the Sahih and Bukhari and stuff. Doesn't matter if you're not praying. You get that with um, new Muslims. So we we're in a, a like a new Muslim like. Uh, internet group and um, a messenger group and you get Muslims we know they're not praying five times a day yet because we're talking about how to improve that and stuff but yet they're they're like proper halal haram of the people Mm -hmm. like you know and worrying about uh, like uh, you know what uh, uh, can you have a dog in the house is it uh, this opinion and that but what you pray your fajr first Mm. man it's fine. Just chill out. Just pray, and it, it's a distraction. I, I believe Shaitan uses the Dean to distract you sometimes when you're not you're not praying, and and it's like, well, yeah, but if you, if you're concentrating on the, all these things that that have difference of opinion on, then it's just just distracting you. You're thinking you're being p- pious and stuff by focusing on that, but you're forgetting the core, like the connection with Allah. And the more you, the more you, like, the Salah is so. Fundamental, it's your spiritual bridge mm. to the to the Creator, and it's the way that Allah gives you iman through that those actions. There's a there's a we we can explain Islam um, logically to people and why it's true logically, but you can't explain the Islam spiritually until they experience it, and you can't mm. experience that spirituality really until you're praying regularly five times a day and doing the minimum bare minimum requirements as a Muslim. So. Mm. I'll, it's, it's usually the prayer that sort of becomes a barrier to those sort of sins, yeah. As well, yeah. For yeah. Example, the more I started praying, yeah, exactly. For, for that. example, the, the gambling, right? It's mm. like, oh, if I'm gambling for like I'm on a six-hour gambling session or whatever it may be, I don't know. Uh, and you go to the casino and you think, okay, but uh, how am I gonna pray? Uh, isn't like there's a mosque in there or masala? I want to stand. Actually, there are some places that do have that. Ironically, stand. really, yeah, no I, way, I, I, well, yeah. But but they actually had a, they, 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 they had a masala inside the casino. Do you know? Alhamdulillah. This is, uh, this, uh, at this least that we got. That's that's a good thing. Yeah. At least you call into a lot. Because yeah. yeah. the the prophet peace upon him, he used to give he used to give dawah to people. He used to go up to the where they're worshiping idols and stuff, yeah, and yeah. and people like the women. Uh, topless in the marketplace and and that's where the people were that's where dawah mm. was given do you know what i mean so so alhamdulillah that happens because uh, like because at least it's better to be a gambling man that prays than um than a gambling man that doesn't pray yeah so yeah i think like sarkib said there's a good point actually the closer you get to your prayer your prayers the better not the better the muslim you become but the more the closer to Allah you get, and the closer you start thinking, okay, maybe Proper I shouldn't foundation. shouldn't do this. Like, awful, right? God yeah. consciousness. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Like yeah. I was going there this, during my early years as a Muslim. After, like, yeah, I, I was I was a Muslim, and I was still going because it was one of those habits that's hard to break. Some people smoking, drinking. Mine was that connection there, um, and it was at like you say, Maghrib time, and it, go, it goes off, and you look and you watch, and you're like, oh, um, oh, it's okay. I'll do it. I'll do it when I get home. I know cultural Muslims that do this to me as well. Like, we'll be somewhere and they're like, oh, I'll pray when I get home. And you're like, mm, no, we're praying now. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. time to pray. We're praying now. Like, I didn't have that back then because I was a new Muslim. I was like, oh, it's okay. I'll just, I'll make it up when yeah, I get yeah. home. Um, Did you ever fall in the trap because you missed one salah? You didn't bother with the rest of them? That's common. Have you heard um, that before from new Muslims? They they miss Fajr, so they don't see the value in the rest of them. Yeah. Even born Muslims. Like, even yeah. When I have to remind wow. my nephews to pray and everything. It's like, so how many are we on today? And it'll be Maghrib time. It's like, oh, I prayed Dhuhr. And I'm like, yeah, but what, what, what about, about everything else? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyway. yeah. <laughs> I think, I, I don't know if you, I will, inshallah, we'll come on to it later, but I was going to say the struggles of being a new Muslim. Like, th- this was part of my struggle. Um, but we could go back to the, 
Shahada time. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> well, cool, man. I like how we, we jump. Going, we man. just jump. Tangents all over the shop. <laughs> um, not that I can jump at the moment with this foot, oh, but yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I didn't want to become Muslim. Like you said, you didn't either. It's the last thing you want. It's like you lose your your freedom. You like you're constricted to this, mm-hmm. and you can't do this. You can't do that. Um, so I was just reading, happily reading. I was fasting for Ramadan at the time when I took my Shahada. Wow. Um, but I was fasting because of the books I was reading. I understood the concept behind it, why we do it, why we do it, why they do it. I wasn't a Muslim then. Why they do it and stuff. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm fasting. And then this guy came over to me, uh, Arif again, on my lunch break. He's like, oh, you're not eating. I was like, oh, no, no, it's Ramadan. He's like, he looked at me like a bit puzzled. He's like, have you taken your, like, are you, are you a Muslim? I'm like, no, no, no. He's like, oh, okay. He's like, oh, come sit with us over here on the table. Um, all the Muslim boys are there because you, ha- you have your lunch break, don't you? Um, That's where the best food is, right? Yeah, the, non- <laughs> the, the, the non-existent food at that time. Yeah. Um, but Otherwise no, af- after- pasty. <laughs> yeah, afterwards it was the best food, especially the biryani. Yeah. Um, but no, um, so I went to sit, sit with them, we're just chatting away and stuff. And a couple of days later, he came back to me. Um, he said, I've told my parents about you. I'd like, they'd like you to come over for iftar. I was like, what the heck's iftar? Yeah. Because um, I didn't understand all the Arabic lingo and stuff. And I was like, um, okay. And I was like, what's that? He's like, oh, it's when we break our fast at the end of the day. I was like, why didn't you say that? Like, <laughs> um, So he's like, you come over, there's going to be a sheikh there. You can ask him questions. He'll be able to give you good answers if you want and stuff. I was like, yeah, yeah, amazing thinking. I'd be able to quiz somebody now and find find a chink so I don't have to become Muslim. Like, yeah, yeah. I'd be like, so what about this? And he's like, yes, I've got it. I, I I don't have to be this this person that I'm reading about and I agree with. Um, Cause so I went to the casino. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I walked over to the sheikh and um, no, I walked into the house. Sorry, my mate came to the door, met me. As I come into the room, I walk in. It's a sea of Muslims. Like really? there's about 20, 20, 20 guys in the room. Um, the obviously the if I pay for you to break your fast, I get the rewards. Of you breaking your fast, yeah, so you yeah. think what that family's doing for twenty people plus. Alhamdulillah, it's amazing. But yeah, the sheikh made a beeline for me as the token white guy in the room at the time. Like, So the sheikh's like, oh, hello. So he obviously knew I was coming, made a beeline for me. He's like, sit down, let's have a chat. So I sat down, questions, asked a few things. He's like, oh, let me ask you a question. I was like, okay. Because everything I asked him, he could answer. And I was like, okay. And he's like, let me ask you a question. I thought, oh, yes, okay. Let's see if I can get out of it this way. And he's like, do you believe in the prophet, peace be upon him? I was like, yeah. He's like, do you believe in one God? I was like, yeah. Do you believe in this? Yeah. Do you believe in that? Yeah. He's like, you're a Muslim. He's like, I was like, no, 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 I'm not. He's like, no, you believe everything that we believe, but you just haven't said the words yet. Like you believe it yeah, in your heart, yeah. but it hasn't like come out of your mouth yeah. yet. And I was like, damn. I was like, I, and I'm sat there again, a bit emotional at this point. Like I can feel the hairs on my back and my neck is going up again. I'm not crying yet, so I could be all right. Um, so yeah, I sat there and I was like, damn, how do I get out of this? And he said, oh, and I could see it. I was smiling though like I knew I was smiling from ear to ear not yeah. physically but I was smiling so much and he was like just stay there a sec and he turned around and he said to the, the guys in the room he's like I'll oh, take a seat a sec he said repeat after me and I thought okay I'm going to do this and he said um, so we we did the shahada basically and then I had all these random guys coming up kissing me on the cheek and stuff I was like what the heck is this <laughs> like, um, and people shaking my hand and so happy for me and stuff and it was just like Okay, it's done. Like, what? What's the next steps? So I had that sheikh with me for two. He was over from Singapore. He was in South Wales. He's doing collections for. He's got mosques in Singapore mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, so he's collecting, and I spent two weeks with him. Then, so I'd go to work. Then I go straight to um, to hit where he was staying after work to learn like Al Fatiha and stuff like that. And he'd be teaching me as much as he could in two weeks. Excuse me. Sorry. Um, so yeah, after that two weeks, he went home, and that's when I felt the crash. I guess, no, well, not so much the crash. Like you're more left on your own. Like everybody's so happy that you become Muslim on the day, and and the likes, and they're like giving you the hugs and the kisses and stuff. And oh my god, there's some tusby and there's this and there's that, and you're yeah, just like, um, and then after that, it's like, okay, see you, carry on, and that's where like now. I'm trying to help the new Muslims who get are in that position. Like I'm trying to give them structure and like support because I know what it was like just to be left to your own devices. Cause I'm, I'm going back home then and I'm like, okay, what do I do now? I'm still reading books, but then I'm on YouTube and I'm like, well, so 
um, looking into like the difference between Sonny and Shear and why people curse one another and then why is this guy wearing a big pointy hat and twirling around in circles and you just get lost on all these different like tangents like mm. useless stuff that a new Muslim doesn't need to lo- n- learn and um, yeah I was sort of left on my own for about 18 months learning like I didn't have a connection with a mosque at that yeah. point because I didn't want to walk through those doors because I didn't know what was behind it um, yeah, oh, I know. Yeah, I know that. And you're feeling. like, you still, you like walk past it and think, yeah, today's the, today's the day. Today's no, 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 it's not. And yeah. just walk straight past it. Yeah, it's it's like, weird, isn't it? Like, because you don't know what's behind the doors. You're yeah. like, if I go in, are they gonna like string me up? Are they gonna like you? Do, like you've got those fears. Of, like I d- anxiety. Yeah. yeah, I have a regret. Once, oh man, it was um, a few years ago. I was in sort of local masjid, and um, I was there. It was Drawi, one of the nights of Ramadan. I can't remember exactly which one. And I saw this English guy just walk in, looking really nervous, really shy. And then I was just on, I was just just on the side, just waiting for the salah to begin. And as I see him, and he just looked out of his element. He was like, "What the heck's going on here?" He yeah. just looked super nervous. And I thought, "Should I go up to him? Should I go up to him?" Yeah, I think I should go up to him. Should go up to him. And then. Um, I was just contemplating whether or not I should go up to him because I thought it's a bit like me going up to him like, oh, how are you? You know, like... Yeah, like a stranger. Yeah, like, who, who, yeah. Are you from the council? Like, yeah. who, who, like, <laughs> but I, I don't want to do that. So, but then, and then I was like, you know what, I should do it, I should do it. And then before I knew it, he he, he wasn't there anymore. And I was like, oh. And I just think about it sometimes, like, was he did there he, as a new Muslim? Was yeah, he there he as a non-Muslim? Yeah. Or... Like, yeah, SubhanAllah, may, may Allah guide him um, anyway, yeah, and, and all of us. But yeah, yeah just, um, I think we need to be a lot more accommodating as uh, Muslims in terms of opening the doors to non-Muslims the, and um, new Muslims the, as well. Mos- yeah. There's a campaign in there that goes around every year. Um, open Mosque Day. Open Mosque Day, yeah. yeah. And that, that, alhamdulillah, I've been involved in that in a, sure. one of the mosques in Cardiff a couple of times. And it is so good to break down that barrier because yeah. people come through the door and they're like, oh, okay, it's not what I expected. Yeah. Like, we do in what the mosque I'm heavily involved in in Cardiff. We do uh, we invite schools in and um, get the kids yeah. in. And we talk to them about Islam, explain like the five pillars basically, and we try and they all come in and they're like, so we we're like, so what do you know about Islam? And they're like, um, Salah, Zakah, and they're all Arabic, Arabic, Arabic. We're like, you're in South Wales. We're speaking English today. Like, there's no, so it's not Salah. It's prayer. It's not Zakah. It's it's charity. It's not saum. It's fasting. Like the, the, you try and just make it more connectable and stuff. And we're like, right, well, let's teach you about it. So we teach them. Like we got little stations that they go at, and we got one person on each station that tells them this is salah. This is what we do. This is why we do it. Um, and then we've got a Quran station as well. And like they come to the mosque, they sit on the carpet, which is the nice thick plush carpets, you know. And they're like, oh, this is nice. Like, and it's sort of initially breaks down that barrier of like Islam's this foreign thing behind those doors that I can't actually see. Yeah. Um and yeah, it's an amazing experience. You see the kids coming in a bit nervous sitting there. They get the rowdy ones obviously just strolling in. Like, yeah. I've been here before the the Muslims are ready and um but you see the non Muslims walk back out with a smile on their face with a bit of Arabic with their name writ- like we write their yeah, name in Arabic yeah, and stuff. Cool. And um yeah, it's an amazing see, to see them like break down these barriers. But whenever they like, I see somebody that looks a bit nervous in the mosque now, I always make a beeline and I'm like, Assalamu alaikum, assuming they've been, been Muslim already. Yeah, and if yeah. they look at me and go, uh, Hi, it's like, Oh, hi, what the <laughs> like, are you okay? Do you need and the amount of times I've come across people that say, Oh, I'm just looking for this or I'm interested in that, mm. and like. Me and I called him Tan earlier. Like nobody knows who Tan is. My 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 boy. <laughs> Everyone knows who Tan is. Um, so me and one of the guys in South Wales, uh, Tanvir. He, mashallah, is an amazing person. You know him from mashallah, the retreat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the brothers here know him from the retreat as well. And he's Dawa is amazing. He, he's going to watch this and cringe when he sees it. But no, um, he's the reason that I became a better Muslim as in, and like I say he'll wince when he if, if he watches this I'm going to hope hope he doesn't watch it cause <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so he I'm doesn't cringe so um, <laughs> may Allah reward him that's um, amazing I mean he's amazing um, 
But yeah, basically, 18, I'll come on to Tan, actually. We'll do it. There's a good good segue straight into it. So for 18 months, I was lost. Like I say, I was working with these boys in New in uh, Newport. They were amazing. Like, we used to pray together in work because we, uh, I managed to get a prayer room for us because I was uh, as soon as we became Muslim, I was like, right, where are we praying? And they're like, oh, I go in the fire exit or I go on the stairwell or something. I was like, we're not doing that. We need a prayer room. So I sp- spoke to the fac- facilities manager and he's like, oh, yeah, we've got a spare storeroom. We'll just empty it out and give it a lick of paint and you can pray, pray in there. Cool. So we all used to pray together, Jamaat, every day. It was amazing. Um, so you'd walk. So I used to be downstairs and the uh, storeroom was in the other block. So I'd walk upstairs. I'd be like, Hussein, Hassan, like, c- come, with, come with me, boys. Saeed, let's go. And, um, yeah, we'd all walk up, like 11 of us, into this little room and we'd all pray together. It was amazing. Like, it was so good. I had that connection through yeah, prayer that brilliant. way. But then when I left and like on a fr- uh, in the evenings, I didn't have that connection. And on weekends, I was on my own again. So it's the, like you said, the laziness gets better of you. You've, oh, I've missed Fudger today. It's okay. I'll start again tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, looking back, I kick I know, myself. I know. <laughs> there was a point in my, um, there was a point, I don't know if it's the same for you, maybe for you guys as, as born Muslims that decided to be like practice, where you're not, you're missing, you're doing Salah, you know, I'm missing Fajr here, da da da. But when you just you, you just consistently five times a day is is this like it becomes easy. Eureka. And and you're <laughs> like, what the hell was I doing before? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get do you know what I mean? No, I, like, I look back and go, Why why do I think it was all right to miss Fajr? what yeah. I thought it was all right. Oh, yeah, well I'll do it. I'll do it when I wake what up. What are you doing? <laughs> like yeah, yeah subhanallah. See, yeah, like you know, you'll have your two, three meals a day. And that's a part of your life, right? It's like, yeah. it's like that, missing your meals every day. Mm. So that's what we try and teach the new Muslims as well, is like you live your life around your salah, not the other way around. Yeah. You don't try and fit your salah into your life. You're like, okay, so I know the hur's at 1, I know Asr's at 3.30, I know Maghrib's at 5.30. And So where am I going to be at these times? Okay, so uh, yeah, I can if I'm in... Cardiff, I know there's a prayer room there and at that time, and if I'm here, that mosque's close and stuff, so I know where I'm going to be at those times, so I, I plan my life around my prayers now. You know you're in a good place when you're doing that, mashallah, like when you're looking at prayer timetables, especially when you're travelling, yep. or where it is, and then you're thinking, okay, th- that's when you know you're in a good place, that's why mashallah. I, yeah, that's why I try and get the new Muslims to sort of slowly adapt to because like you say it's a, it's a good way to live your life and then you're never caught in the court you're caught short sort of thing yeah, like, yeah. oh my van's gone off I'm in the middle of the street where am I going to pray like yeah. so um, and just a quick one another trick people like new Muslims get into is they expect like because when, pe- when people talk about Salah they think oh and it's amazing and you feel so uh, good connections and, and it is mm. sometimes but sometimes it's just I've got to get it done like mm. yeah. uh, and it's it is literally you're going through the motions isn't it, it because we pray to connect to Allah, we pray in obedience to Allah. He mm. told us to do it then, and it might that salah might not be perfect. You did it though, but um, and then there's this like, oh yeah, but it wasn't. I, I'm not feeling anything. I'm not. I've prayed for f- f- four months or whatever consistently, but there's no like ah, feeling, <laughs> and and uh, that's normal as well. That's normal for Muslims to feel yeah, like yeah. that. Um, I've been through it as well. Yeah, like, so I'm not gonna. You know, what I mean, not every salah is perfect, so don't let that stop you praying, mm-hmm. or don't let that make you think you're a, b- a bad Muslim or you're not doing it properly or whatever. It's a you're obeying Allah's power to Allah, and that's beautiful in itself. And your mind will wander as well. Yeah, yeah, your mind wanders. It's yeah. like, like the, the story, isn't it, about um, the uh, the sheikh lead, leading the salah, and he's like, I don't know how many rakah I did, and the guy goes, Oh, you only did three because I was do, doing the I, in the four rakah. I normally do the accounts for my shops, so yeah, and I only managed, yeah, that's yeah, I only managed to get through three, so you definitely did three, and you're like, yeah, That's why it's so, called khushur, yeah. yeah <laughs> so <laughs> your mind will wander from time to time. You will sort of be like a Bismillah Rahman, and then you start thinking, Did I take the fish out of the freezer or whatever yeah, it is? Yeah. You're like, Oh my, day, and just try and knock it, knock yourself back in, and like we all. We're not perfect. None of yeah, us perfect. Exactly. There's only one perfect person in, that was put on this planet. But yeah, so we all sin. We all make mistakes. So, like you say, don't beat yourself up for not getting that the glow from above. Yeah, and you're like, getting that perfect. It's yeah. not. It's like because it's not me having a dig at other religions or whatever. In other beliefs like Christianity, Hinduism, and all that, it's about getting feelings. It's the whole thing is about having oh feelings, and then and you see people like and 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 meditations about getting that zen and stuff, 
and it's it's very self obsessed. It's a very oh, it's got. A, I've got to have pleasure from it. From you, this you, you're like chasing a spiritual high. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, isn't yeah, it? That, I didn't think of it that way, man. Yeah, and mm. and it's the, and and do you know what I think is more beautiful is actually someone who is struggling with the concentration, but they're doing it every day. Yeah. And they're doing it. Why are they doing it? Not because it makes them feel good. And don't stop praying because it is stopping <laughs> making you feel good or whatever. In some salahs, you will have a beautiful feeling and connection with Allah, and that's a blessing. But what's brilliant is that you do it anyway for the sake of Allah. Because the what a Muslim does is does everything in their... Uh, they try hardest to do everything for the sake of Allah, and that's Islam. It's obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's what that is. Um, and it's a bit self-obsessed to go, oh, yeah, but I'm not feeling this, so, you know, I'm going to don't, a, bother. I'm a, don't yeah. bother, yeah. So, yeah. Sorry, I went on a tangent there. It was, no, went, it was good one. But it just, I was having a, a conversation with someone today, this morning, about it, and it was mm. coming to the same sort of uh, vibe. But, yeah. Um, where yeah. were we, bro? Sorry. I don't know. Um, I was still working. We were praying and stuff. But then yeah. even as weekends, months. I was, yeah, so 18 months. I was a bit lost, and I was like, right, what do I need to do? I know, I'll do Umrah. That'll connect me again. Um that'll that'll really like give me a kick and go okay this is this is islam again so i signed up to go to umrah with um uh sheikh in newport alhamdulillah it was amazing like an amazing experience looking back now but at the time i didn't know enough about islam and i didn't like understand what i was doing so much um because there's only so much you can read about um how is that conversation with the uh Family about you going to Saudi Arabia. Umrah. Yeah, that was an interesting one. <laughs> um, I just had to explain it to them, I guess. And uh, like looking back now, uh, I did say I'm going to Saudi, and they're like, why? Why do you want to go there? So I explained. Like, alhamdulillah, I went to Masjid Al Aqsa as well. Um, that was an ama- amazing experience, amazing place as well. Mm. Um, I, I the taxi driver on the way here this morning was saying, oh, I, I didn't think we could go to Masjid Al Aqsa as, as Muslims. I was like, no, nah, that's that's the narrative they're trying to push. Don't don't fall for that. Like, we have to keep going there, or otherwise, it, we're going to lose it. We're going to lose Masjid Al Aqsa. Let's not get too political here, but if you ever get the chance to go to Masjid Al Aqsa, go. Yeah. You might get like I got stuck in the borders for twelve hours. They like the white. Like I've gone with a heavily South Asian. Um, well, actually, there's, it's a 53 seater bus. There's one guy on there that's not Asian. There's the white guy like me. So, <laughs> so we're, go- we're going through customs, yeah. right? And um, the sheikh warns us in advance. He's like, "Look, they'll stop a couple of us just to try and intimidate us, um, and see if they can find something up with us to say, no, nope, you're not coming through. Go back.'" He said, "Just keep calm, stay calm. It happens all the time." So I was like, "Okay." So I'm sat there, think, looking around the bus, like, "It's going to be me." It is going to be me. Like, I stand out like a sore thumb. So I walk up to the counter, and she goes, uh, passport. And I was like, there we go. And she said something else. And I was like, oh, sorry, I didn't hear you, hear that. What was it? She passed me back my passport. Go and wait on the side over there. And the guy comes over, like, three hours later, and he's like, oh, she said you looked a bit suspicious. Because I, I said, sorry, I couldn't hear you. <laughs> so anyway, um, go to Master's Axe is the, is the thing. It's so it's such an amazing place. Like, everything's original. Like they say, every every step you take, either a prophet or an angel, has stepped in those, um, in that step before you. Wow. Um, yeah. So you're walking on the same stones that. It's, it's, uh, I can't explain. It. Like again, the hairs are standing up on the back of my neck. Um, thinking about it because it's you can actually see f- like indentations in the some, uh, in the concrete and stuff, and you think, I wonder whose footprint this was or this. Oh, it's just, yeah, it's an amazing feeling. So they say every. Is it inch or basically every part within the compound is a huge rectangular compound, either a prophet or an angel that stood there before you. And it's like, yeah, it's an amazing feeling. Like, it's an amazing feeling going to Mecca, uh, Mecca and Medina, but it's all modernized now. It's not the same because they've put the marble floor down. It's not the same floor that the prophet, yeah, peace yeah. be upon him, stood on. He walked around in dirt, didn't yeah, he? So, yeah. sorry, sorry. Um, sorry. So, yeah, that's the, the, the amazing feeling is like, oh. Somebody stood here. Yeah. Oh, somebody yeah, stood here. It's like history, it's amazing. It? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Jerusalem still has that authenticity about it. It's just, yeah, something special. Man. You say, please, please try going, people. They, 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 they push the narrative that we can't go. But yeah, it's an amazing place. So I didn't know that you went before. So 
you went you've been twice so uh, yeah alhamdulillah i've been blessed i didn't know you so the first the first time was because i was trying to reconnect and i was trying to find myself as a muslim and it was an amazing experience um and i felt better but then i still felt lost at the same time i didn't know like what am i meant to be doing as a muslim i just feel isolated i'm on my own um and then six months later i was in a in a in a well, it wasn't even a masjid. It was a old um, doctor's surgery that we'd um, com- that not we'd that people had converted into a, a little masjid whilst they were w- waiting to buy this other property to uh, make into a masjid. And this guy next to me, Tan, Tan he he's turned to me. He's like, "How's everything going?" And we we're just chatting and stuff. And he said to me, "I'm um, part of our era." We got this new Muslim retreat. I think you'd really benefit from it. He said, "I think all, if it was a possibility, he said I think all born Muslims would benefit from this retreat. You, you really need to go." I was like, "Okay, mate." I'm thinking retreat for new Muslims, it doesn't sound that great. And he was, he said, "Look, I will talk after Juma. Like the the khutbah is about to start." So I was like, "Okay, okay." So afterwards, he just gave me a quick rundown on it. He's like, "You go." Back then, it was two two weekends and two different months. Um, so he's like, "You come." For the weekend, I think it was like a hundred pound or something, fifty quid for each weekend. And I was like, and he's like, "That's your hotel, your food, your drink, your education, everything in that fifty quid." I was like, mm, I couldn't even do a weekend away in Cardiff for that. Like, it's yeah. do you why? I think it's um, isn't it true that a lot of that's paid by because of the donors? Yeah, 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 the donors. Handling, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's heavily subsidised. Yeah, yeah, which is amazing. Like, and even for those who can't. Uh, for that package, then there's a way for new Muslims to apply for uh, have like a special free application one, for them. Yeah. Yeah. It's completely free. So anyone who's but donated to Ayera, and I'm going to say now, th- this retreat's like changed my life as well. Mine too. It's honestly the reward, Subhanallah. So may Allah reward you. Um, I mean, I mean, um, yeah. So Tan's telling me about this retreat, and I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm thinking I'm never going to go to this thing. So he said, sign up, please sign up. When you go home, sign up. He sent me a WhatsApp with the, the thing. So I looked at it and I was like, 50 quid, oh, I'll sign up. It's, it's not, it is a lot of money, but it's not that much if I don't go. So I signed up and saw him the next week in Jumar again. He was like, yeah, I've signed up. No intention of going in my head. Cause I'm Why thinking, is that though? I just, it's the nerves of like, it's Seeing all like, people, yeah, right? you, you go in somewhere where you, like it was in Milton Keynes that year. So I had, to, I had to get from South Wales to Milton Keynes, yeah. which is about a three and a half, four hour journey in good traffic. Mm. And then meeting random people, not really understanding who who and what and why. And you know yeah. me, I'm a bit yeah. like, I need to know what's happening yeah. at certain, <laughs> like, it's one of my things. I, I'd yeah. like to be organized. And I'm like, mm, okay. So it was the f- Friday before the retreat. Like Tan, I saw, I get, saw him again in the mosque and he's like, please come next week. I was like, okay, okay. Um, so the fr- I left on the Friday because it starts Friday about Maghrib time so I went to Jummah on the Friday in the mosque I was like no nah, I'm not going to go I got back in my car I packed my bags and everything and so, so the, glad you went yeah I packed my bags I was like oh, let's go I told my mum I was going because um, I was living with her at the time dad had passed away at this point so I was like uh, just to warn you you're going to be on your own for this weekend I'm going here um, so yeah I went to the retreat and again, a couple of times driving there, stop at Starbucks, having a latte, thinking, should I just turn around now? Shall I not bother going? I've I've, I've made the effort. I've sort of, I've I've made the effort to to drive somewhat. But I was like, no, no, I got there. So I walked through the door. Um, I was in the ho- yeah, I was in a hotel. Walked through the door. I tans there waiting. So I have a friendly face straight yeah, away. Yeah, I was like, Alhamdulillah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, no, I know this guy. I walked up to him, slammed him. He's like, I'm so happy you came. So then you got the sign-in process with it was Richard and um, Lee at the time. So it's, uh, another two reverts. I'm like, oh, this is nice. Uh, like sign, sign here, read that, make sure you're okay with this. So yeah, signed myself into the retreat, and they're like, there's your, there's your room. Gave me the key, and I was like, okay, who am I sharing with? They're like, no, no, it's your room on your own, your own shower, your own toilet, your own bed. Like you don't. Like you're not like you're not in a dormitory with like yeah, ten blokes, yeah, yeah. and I was like, "Whoa, this is nice." <laughs> like, so I went to the room. They said, "They said could just come back about six thirty, I think it was." Uh, so I came back at six thirty. We came down to reception. It's just all the reverts in reception together. Um, uh, Chris was there, Issa. Um, yeah, yeah. So Chris was there. I'd recognised him. 
I think I'd seen a, a Shahada video, like you said, it blew up. So yeah. Chris was there. I was chatting to him. Um, and if you haven't seen the episode, uh, it's up now. Ding. <laughs> 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 and the link's down below with an uh, episode with me and Chris and Ben. Um, but yeah, so I'd seen him and I went up to him. I was like, I started speaking to him and instantly connected because we both support Liverpool. So we had that instant, yeah, like, wicked. He's, a, he's a good lad to get, to, um, he's easy to get on with as well. So, yeah, we just started chatting and stuff, and and then I, I instantly I was like, oh, relaxed. Yeah. Like, I can talk to somebody and not like feel on my own. This this guy in the corner, like, oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know who to talk to. Or, um, so yeah, and then we went, we had a tour of the hotel. This is where we're going to pray every day, this is where we're going to um eat together, and like. It was ama- like an amazing experience that first night, uh, that first couple of hours. And then I think, I can't remember exactly, but I think ARG gave us a, a quick talk. Um, Abdurrahim Green, sorry, just in case nobody knows ARG. Um, gave us a quick talk. Um, and then we, I think it must have been about nine o'clock at night and we had the advice, go to bed, boys. This is going to be an l- early morning. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. a long weekend. And we were all like, yeah, all right. <laughs> so we stayed up for a couple hours uh, drinking coffee, tea, whatever, ch- ch- chatting just to get to know each other. Um, and then, yeah, the next morning we all woke up for, for, for Fajr. We pr- you pray together in the room. And you basically live the life of a Muslim. Like if you lived in a Muslim state, this is the yeah. closest you can get living in the West to how you would live Islam day if, to day. If you're not fully doing, pra- like... You know when I said the people that miss Fajr and mm. or, or whatever, and you know maybe don't always eat halal and stuff. If you're in that stage as a new Muslim, this makes it easy, and you get to experience it all. Yeah, and yeah you're you're fully immersed. You're fully immersed, and yeah. you know you can do it because you did it. Yeah. You did it for two, three days. You were praying all five prayers. You're doing this. You're doing that, and you come out of it just feeling like boom. Well, and you're it, rejuvenated. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I think amazing. if anyone goes on this, I'm talking to you. Yeah. If anyone goes up to this, afterwards, think, right, how can I implement this in my life? And have a reflection, because it's easy getting the le- getting the lectures, learning things, getting all the, um, meeting the brothers and stuff, or sisters if you're a sister. Um, but afterwards, go, right, I've done this for three, four days. Well, I can't remember how long it is, but um, I think three. Mm. And then, um, and and so I can do it. It's evidence that I can do it. So how do I start doing this in my day-to-day life? So I just had to say that because I want I no, want the Muslims amazing. to benefit. No, I, I, that's part of the reason I agreed to come on here. Like yeah. you say, I don't like to be on camera, but I have to t- tell people to do the retreat because yeah, like amazing. Aira's new Muslim retreat made me as a Muslim. Like I say, I prayed Fajr to, with the, everyone, and this is the other thing as well. It's fully segregated, so there's no like, oh she's hot. Let me sit. Let me yeah, sort of try yeah, yeah. hooking up with her type of thing. It's like there is no interaction between the sexes. And you like you, like we said, you live the life of Islam like a m- proper Muslim. You don't have to worry about what, whether it's halal. It's like, is this is this full English breakfast yeah. halal? Yeah, the sausage is lamb. What? <laughs> it was what? Amazing, such Beef an amazing bacon. feeling. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we did, f- yeah, fajr. Then I think uh, Abu Taib gave us a little talk, um, explaining about the weekend and stuff, and we had a little lecture. And the, basically, they teach you the five pillars. Yeah. Is the, the, the basic way to explain it. And like I said earlier, I was going off on like, what's the difference between Sunni Shia? What's the Sufi? What's the Wahhabi? What's this? What's that? And you like, I didn't even know the five pillars fundamentally like yeah. I should have. And, and I just want to pause you. And so, people watching as well, it's not just oh, the five pillars of Islam. You can read it on Wikipedia. And hmm. fi- no. the, it's the foundational like mentality putting it into practice in your life and it's just and you everyone that goes it's just mind blown and there's been Muslims that go there and they've been Muslim like eight years or whatever and they're like what have I done for eight years like yeah. I didn't even have the right like Mindset, foundation yeah, yeah it's, it's not just there's not even just the five pillars there's the six elements as yes, well like yeah. and it's the and that's the bit that I needed I think because a new Muslim you can learn the five pillars and you're like yeah yeah I understand them but it's understanding and implementing them into your life yeah <laughs> Especially Salah, yeah, and then the six, uh, six ele- uh, pillars of Iman. Pillars of Iman. Thank you. I was stumbling my le- words there, wasn't I? Um, and it's like genuinely, I could. Be, I've been a Muslim six years now. And I'm still learning the six elements yeah. because you learn like they took the like one of the lessons was like okay, let's learn about Allah and some of His names, and they teach you like the these 
the most forgiven. So yeah, let's pick that one. Well, yeah. So you pick like, okay, why is he the most forgiven? And then you look into the hadiths. Like um, I, th- I remember it so clearly. It was our, Abu Taib was teaching us. Mashallah, another amazing man that may I reward him for all the efforts he does and money, oh, just all the boys and mm. women, sorry, as well, because obviously I don't get involved in that side. But, um, and I remember him clearly saying, like, okay, let's look into the, the most forgiven, just on its own. And I was like, okay. So then he starts t- talking about the hadith. I think it was Abu Huraira, um, narrated in a Sinsahi, maybe. And it's about the guy who murdered 99 people. Yeah. And he went up and asked somebody, will I be forgiven? They said, no. So he's kills that person and he keeps going and going and going and then he gets to this one person he says will I be forgiven and he said go to that village over there um, there's somebody there that you could talk to um, and I th- the, they might have the answer you want so he's making his way to that village and he dies upon the path uh, upon the journey sorry to that new village um, and the angels of death come to him and they're trying to work out where he is on the path is he closer to the to being forgiven because he would have been forgiven he would have come to somebody of knowledge who said yeah your sin your passings your new, your sins if you repent and go forward then inshallah you'll be forgiven so therefore he'd stop killing people um so he, he dies on the path and the angels come down and they can't decide whether he was closer to the old way of life or the new way of life and um they ref- i think they refer to god to allah and say, what should we do with this one? And he moves the villages slight, like slightly one way, so he was closer to forgiveness. Yeah, and up. it's just like, yeah. poof, your mind's blown just with that one hadith. Yeah. And you can look into other hadiths about him yeah. being the most forgiven and the most gracious. Oh, actually, actually pondering on what um, on the names of Allah, and it's and then one thing we learn as well is um, is emulating it. Mm. So being forgiving, being yeah. loving. What, how can you become the better by emulating the beautiful attributes? You know, obviously we can't have the same. That we're not the most loving, you yeah. know, but we we, we can it, be loving. It's, it's inspiring, mm. man. Uh, anyway, bro. Um, unfortunately, we're gonna have to wrap it up. So, uh, is that all right? Yeah. Before before we before we wrap it up, um, I want you to give advice to any new Muslim watching this. Um, and any reverts that, that uh, what what would your like top um, top advice be, or anyone that's thinking about becoming Muslim as well? Have a like, think. It's cool. Yeah. So for the new Muslim, mm. um, look around, get them, find somewhere that does mentorship. Whether it be Aira do a good new uh, Muslim course, they do mentorship as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to plug Aira big time now. Uh, they do the courses for new Muslims. They do mentorship. There's like we do a new Muslim club in Car- uh, Cardiff. Yeah, There's new Muslim clubs around the UK as well. There's um, the boys up north. I can't. I've l- forgotten their names now. There's a the new Alex Castle. and um, they've got yes, their own yeah. new Muslim coming uh, soon club. Yeah, yeah. Um, look into that and try and get some sort of mentorship or somebody who potentially has been through it before and can help guide yeah, you. Because definitely. it's all well and good going to the mosque and people telling you like the born cultured Muslims telling you this is haram, this is halal, you can't do this, you can't do that. But for somebody who's been through it and struggled with it as well, to say, I get you, bro, or sis, I get you, I've been there, I know it's hard, but let's try these steps to overcome it. Mm. Um, So yeah, and I think for the people looking into Islam is... My way was a bit long. It was like 15 years to become Muslim. If I'd actually read the book earlier, I might have been Muslim a lot quicker. Um, but it would be to do some decent research, but know what you're reading and watching online because some of the stuff online is nonsense. But again, go to a reputable source. Again, like Aira, there's booklets online. They've so they've got free Qurans, free... I think it's all free, isn't it, on the internet? or it's for, Free for new Muslims and non-Muslims. Yeah. yeah. So you could go onto their website, look at the links, there's loads of information on there. Again, I think there's courses on on the website as well where you can like you could even sign up for the new Muslim course if you're not a new yeah. Muslim. So and it'll again it'll teach you the basics. Just want to say actually, um, so what we've been talking about this like life changing uh, retreat that we went on. Mm. Not everyone can go. Like there's limited spaces, and um, you might not live close or whatever. The actual things that we learn in those courses are on um, newmuslim.iera.org. There's a there's a free course for new Muslims. Link below. <laughs> right. 
check it out because it's it's brilliant it's really good mm -hmm. and actually as a, like i've been a muslim 10 years i'm i've just registered myself i'm going to do it again yeah um because even and even if you've been a muslim like three years or whatever and you feel you but honestly it's you you realize that how much and you forget you you, you realize how much it's how the f how important the foundation of the mm. belief is and when your foundation is solid you're just rock solid in the dean there's no yeah. missing fadger and uh, none of this it's proper solid in the dean with that comes uh, more good deeds and it's 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 life changing man so yeah we'll you know already we'll put a disclaimer so, in so there. Uh, yeah check you, check it out you may still miss fadger accidentally because we all do it sometimes we obviously sleep yeah i don't but no, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah well, but accidental yeah, sleep make it up yeah. yeah yeah but yeah it does like you say, it strengthens your your man. Um, but if it wasn't for Aira, I don't think um, I'd be anywhere near where I am now. Like Alhamdulillah, I've become one of the mentors on the course on the retreat because it was that influential on my life. Mm -hmm. And like I say, it taught me that foundation. So I think normally they do them around November time, and inshallah, there'll be one this year. We need to sort that out. Um, and if it does come about, I encourage everybody to sign up. All the new Muslims, whether, yeah. like Ben said, whether it's been eight years, ten years, two years, couple of months, days, sign up because you'll learn Al Fatiha, you'll learn the pillar. You'll remember when you uh, turned. I up. went to <laughs> right, I went uh, what two, three years ago was it? Yeah. Um, and I was like, oh, I know Al Fatiha. I'm, I'll, I'll probably help the mentors teach the other guys. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I went there going, no, it's fine, you know. And then you get like that, and then the, and the, and it was Tan, yeah. and he went, okay, cool, and I was like. Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Rahim, and like, and I was like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, I was saying it wrong. Um, I was saying not Rayril, mm. Ril. I was saying I was rolling an R, Rayril, Ril. Mm. um, like, and and I didn't even know because how I learned was listening. I didn't read the learn Arabic. I yeah. listened and mimic, but I just I just had that natural um thing. I was quite quick to catch, uh, get the um pronunciation sounding all right so i got arrogant and stuff got arrogant about that and and it it slapped me a new one and I, <laughs> and it made me humble and i actually i learned loads man yeah. it's a lot i really not perfected but really polished up my al fatia which improved my future um tajweed in the uh, it's brilliant man yeah, i mean it's kick so you if you think you know it all mate get to this retreat and we'll see <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll we'll see you yeah uh, we'll see inshallah. you there. that's for the new muslims yeah, yeah. yeah for <laughs> the new muslims yeah, yeah. If you're born muslim just go down to your lo local mosque you know and See what their local of imam course, has to say yeah. about your tajweed. Not not our last retreat, but the retreat before, we had a non-Muslim come who was on the cusp of becoming Muslim. And he took a shahada after the retreat because he was like, oh, so that's overwhelmed. Yeah, I was there. I was, I, that was the first time I saw a live shahada, mm. you know that, like oh, sure. in front of me. Like, so yeah, it was yeah, amazing. Was like this course is amazing. I'll talk to the camera instead of you, Sarkib, sorry. But yeah, this course changed my life. It's changed other people's lives. Like, and thank you for the donors because if it wasn't for that, like I did, I wasn't a donor back then to Aira. Alhamdulillah, I do know. I'm not bragging, but mm. uh, because I know how much of a difference it makes. If I could give twenty quid to McDonald's, I know. <laughs> if I could give twenty quid to McDonald's, McDonald's or twenty yeah. quid to Sorry. Aira, the fish. Yeah. No, no, the, the McPlant. The McPlant. McPlant. Yeah, it's, all, yeah, it's, it's banging. Banging, mate. <laughs> uh, Astaghfirullah. Anyway, give twenty quid to McDonald's or twenty quid to Aira. I know the twenty quid to Aira is going to get me so many more rewards on the day of Next judgment level, man. it's unbelievable Next so yeah level. please donate and please for the new muslims or the long muslims like if it's been 10 years or whatever come to the retreat because it's life-changing or sign up to the course if you can't so yeah. yeah bro it's been amazing i've got one Which question like, oh. oh i'm a bit disappointed da, da, da. are we, we going to hold why, why do i have this no tissues yeah i've got this and I, we didn't we, have to use it once. We so we explain we, the let's tissues explain quickly. the tissue thing. Because <laughs> there's so so you're known dodgy. to be very emotional, right? And every retreat, <laughs> they're crying because and, 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 and I love it actually because it's <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, there's no there's footage. Yeah, there is not it. stick the footage. Yeah, right. Zip the footage now. <laughs> yeah, that's it, bro. I'm going. Don't. <laughs> Did you I, just see that? I did you see the, <laughs> Did you witness that? <laughs> <laughs> you see me as a blubber. So, and mess. Yeah, so he's an emotional guy. I just, I just wanna, it, but it's brilliant because it's like he means it. It's but yeah, know. I want to ask like why? How come you were so emotional then? Like what, what retreat? Was it? It's yeah, good, yeah. Like I say, because I was lost. I uh, don't, bro. You're gonna get me going. I can feel myself going. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, it's because I was so lost, and this retreat was like the thing that made me like connect again. And I was like. 
why me? Why have I been blessed? Ah, oh, man, where's those tissues? Um, why me? Why have I been blessed with this religion? Like, I, for the first, like I say, two years, I was lost. I was like, mm, okay, I agree it's real. But then yeah. when when you get given those fundamental, like the basics, the absolute basics, but explained to you in such a beautiful beautiful way, whether it was ARG or Abu Taib or anybody, and you sat there and you're, your mind's blown. You're like, why have I been chosen for this religion? Like, what have I done? I've oh, sinned mate. so many times. Yeah. And then when I'm talking to you two boys in the in the like uh, the interview afterwards, all this emotion's in me. And then I start talking about my dad because he was passing away and this and that. And I'm like, like I I can feel my eyes going again now. Right. And it just all comes out as one. Yeah, and yeah. I am an emotional person. I'll cry at watching Bambi or something. Like let's be <laughs> honest, like, like cry at Monsters Inc or something. And there's nothing to cry about in that film. It's meant to be humour, but um, but no, it's just that retreat. Like like I say, I can't recommend it enough. And also the um, you you got emotional at the last retreat. Remember when we had that big circle? Yeah, and it's the uh, clip at the end of David's don't, interview. Yeah, David's right? talk. Yeah. Um. Every year, you blow me away, boys. Like, I sit there on the first day thinking, oh, what to expect? Who's going to walk through the door? And you see you guys come in as these, like Magnus said, you're scared. You don't, like, when I was an attendee, I was scared. I did, I, Tanvir convinced me to come. I almost backed out the day before because I was like, nah, I, did, I, I don't want to do this. Alhamdulillah, best thing I ever did in my life. And I, that's... That was the catalyst that made me want to be the volunteer because I want you boys to get exactly that experience. And I would ask you to push this retreat to all your Muslim friends, revert Muslim friends. Um, and if you follow Aira on social media, repost their tweets when it's, a, uh, when it's out because inshallah you'll get some of the rewards for the people who come on your behalf. Like Tyler said, there was a brother from last year, so inshallah he's benefiting off stuff you've learnt. And, I just, uh, I just hope that this has given you the foundations you need to push forward and become that better Muslim. And yeah, you... <laughs> is that time already? Yeah. What, what, what was it? Yeah, so you kind of, you're like a full circle in a way, mashallah. Like yeah, you kind of started it off as a, an attendee and now you become a mentor, right? Mm -hmm. So how's that journey been like? And now, now mashallah, you're a mentor. What do you get out of that? like you see these people coming like I, I resonate with them as well because you come in there's this sheep they're like oh shaking and you're like all scared and stuff and then you see them going out as lions like they're like yes I know my religion I know I'm a Muslim now yeah yeah and it's Proud. you you see that progression through and like if like if I teach somebody one line in Al-Fatiha that they would pr like you said like perfecting that ghairil or whatever it may be or like Rahim or and you think man, I've helped that person. Like, it's just... And it's partly selfishness as well, because inshallah, on the Day of Judgment, inshallah. I'll get that reward for helping them. Um, but it's knowing I was that lost sheep at the time as well, yeah. and you come back out invigorated and feeling strong enough to be like, okay, this is why I'm a Muslim. This is my deen. This is my religion. And after that, I got into giving dawah, and I got into mentoring, and I... like. I was straight on the phone to Manny afterwards. I was like, I need to be a mentor. I need to be involved in this retreat. It's so life-changing. But yeah. Um, and it's what linked you up with me as well. Um, yeah, I met so yeah. many amazing... Like, alhamdulillah, I got to go to Umrah after that as well because yeah. I met Chris and he introduced me to Hamza. And like, like it's opened so many opportunities. Like, I knew you boys now. I come to London and I, I know I can... I could pop in here and you're not just going to go, oh, it's him again. You'll wa wa welcome me with a warm smile. And a Do you know what it amazes me? That Allah, when you step towards Allah, he runs towards you. Yeah, yeah? alhamdulillah. And you book that um, retreat thinking, no, nah, I'm too anxious or it's going to mm. be rubbish and, you know, there's no point. And then for the sake of Allah, you, you, you stepped forward and you got given so much. Mm. SubhanAllah. Alhamdulillah. Like, like, le like life <laughs> changing. Yeah. Just because you just... Paid fifty quid and turned up. It's fan of law. Yeah, it's Amazing. Crazy. I'm trying to make me cry now. Aren't right. I? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no. We're nearly there. Come on, man. Just yeah. Five minutes more, man. Come on. Just one, one more little push and I'll be done. I'm sorry, mo really. Most in hiding behind the camera. He's just smoking. Ah, you got in the sheet ready. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, mashallah. But no, no, exactly. I'd say Jazakallah, bro. for just letting me come on. Like, inshallah, this connects with somebody and they they inshallah. they take the take the step to do 
either the, the online stuff or the retreat or yeah I'm, I'm looking for, can I get involved in the next retreat yeah Bismillah. see you there Assalamu alaikum <laughs> 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 out <laughs>